Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial and operational research, especially the linear programming part. So, in the previous couple of videos, we've been watching videos on linear programming, and we've been solving maximization problems. So, we've seen how to formulate the LPP from a word problem, and we also solved two maximization problems using the graphical method in the last two videos. So, in this video, what we're going to see is we're going to see a minimization problem. Now, if you watch those videos, we know that in linear programming, both maximization is possible as well as minimization. So sometimes what happens is companies incur some loss or have some risk, right? So in that case, a company wants to reduce that loss, reduce that risk or some deficit. So again, same linear programming concepts can be applied and we can use graphical solution to solve these linear programming problems. So this is one example of a minimization problem and let's quickly jump into the question and we'll try to understand what the question is all about. Okay, so I'm just going to read the question first. So a TV company operates two assembly lines, line one and line two. Each line is used to assemble the components of three types of TVs, color TV, standard TV and economy TV. Now the expected daily production on each line is given in the table below. So we'll come to the table in a minute. Let's just first complete this question. Now the daily running cost of two lines are rupees 6,000 for line one and rupees 4,000 for line two. Now, of course, the TV manufacturer is running these two assembly lines. And to run these assembly lines, some cost is going to be spent out, right? So for assembly line one, the cost is rupees 6,000. And for assembly line two, the cost is rupees 4,000, which means that every day 6,000 and 4,000 rupees is going from the pocket of the TV company manufacturer for keeping these lines running. So every day they are going to be spending something. This is what this question is saying. Now it is given that the company must produce at least 24 color, color TVs. 16 standard TVs and 48 economy TV sets. So this is the requirement which is being given to this TV company. And what we have to do is we have to formulate the above problem as an LPP. So this is a word problem which we have to first convert it to a LPP and taking the objective function as minimization. So here we want to minimize the cost and we also have to determine the number of days that the line should be running to meet the requirements. Now I would recommend that you just pause this video and read out the question again, especially whatever I have marked in blue. And now let me just tell you what the question is all about. So here the question is all about minimizing the cost. So every day the TV company is going to keep running line one and line two and every day the TV manufacturing company is going to incur a loss of 6,000 and 4,000 right daily. So if TV manufacturer runs line one for two days, he will incur 6,000 into two, which means 12,000 rupees loss. And if he keeps running line two for two days, he will face 4,000 into two that is 8,000 rupees loss. So this is the concept. Now the requirement is given as 24 color TVs, 16 standard TVs and 48 economy TVs, right? So you can see that this is a requirement column. This is the lines that is line one and line two, and this is the models. So these values that is three, one, one, one and two, six are values for line one can make three color TVs, one standard TV and two economy TV in one single day. So these are those values. So that is what this line says the expected daily production on each line is given in the table below. So this is that expected production. Okay. So line one can make three color TVs, one standard TV and two economy TVs in one day. Similarly, line two can make one color TV, one standard TV and six economy TVs in one day. So I hope you've got the question and what we have to do is we have to determine the number of days required by the TV manufacturing company to meet this requirement. Okay. So obviously you can see that in one day, the company cannot make 24 color TVs, right? In one day, even if line one and line two are running simultaneously, they can make a total of four TVs, right? So obviously it has to be running more than one day. So that is what we have to find out. We have to find out the number of days required for line one and line two to be kept running so that 24, 16 and 48 units of all these TV model requirements is satisfied. And we have to do so in the most optimum way which means that we have to minimize the cost. And how can we minimize the cost? If we reduce the number of days the lines are running, obviously the cost is going to be reduced, right? So that's our end goal. So I hope you've got the entire question now. And now we have to convert this entire problem into a LPP problem, which means we have to represent all these constraints and all these factors in algebraic form. So let's first, wherein we make certain assumptions. Okay, so as you can see, we have assumed that let X and Y represent the number of days line one and line two must be run. So of course we want to find out the number of days that the line should be running. And since there are two different lines, we are assuming that X 
is the number of days line one is running. So this is X and Y represents the number of days line two is running. So this is Y. Okay. So keep this in mind. And depending on this, now the minimization equation is as follows. So this is that equation minimize Z equals to 6000 X plus 4000 Y. So what is this minimization equation? So if you've been watching the previous two videos, we were having maximization equation, but now we are minimizing the cost. So this time it is minimize. So we are saying Z is equal to 6000 X 4000 Y. So for one day, when line one is running, the cost is 6000. So for X days, of course, it is going to be 6000 into X. Similarly, for one day, when line two is running, the cost is 4000. So if it's kept running for Y days, it would be 4000 into Y. So this is what makes the minimization equation. So this is very important. So this is step number one, wherein we are just actually first trying to formulate the LPP. And the last part is left that we have to add the necessary constraints. So we've seen that these individual rows are the actual constraints, right? So they become the constraints. So let's see the constraints over here. So as you can see, we have the constraints as subject to 3x plus 1y is greater than or equal to 24. So this is for the first row that is for the color TV. So 3x plus 1y has to be greater than or equal to 24. Now they have given us the minimum requirement of 24, which means that obviously it can go above because this is an inequality, right? It is not an equation. So that's why this is greater than or equal to because it cannot be lower than 24. It can be always greater than 24. That's the minimum requirement. So three is the number of color TVs line one can produce in one day. And when we multiply it with X, which is the number of days line one is running, we'll get the total number of color TVs produced by line one in X days. Similarly, line two can produce one color TV in one day. So in Y days, it will produce one into Y, right? So this is that equation. And based on the same thing, we have the second equation one X plus one Y greater than or equal to 16, which is for this row that is the standard TV row. And the last equation is two X plus six Y is greater than or equal to 48, which stands for this last economy row. So it's based on the same principles. And of course, X and Y is greater than or equal to zero. Obviously the number of days cannot be less than zero. They cannot be negative, right? You cannot have minus one days. That doesn't make sense. So that's why X and Y is greater than or equal to zero. So this was just the formulation of the entire word problem into an LPP problem. Now let's move ahead and see the actual graphical solution. And to solve it, we have step number one. So in step number one, we replace all inequalities in constraints. So as you can see, we removed all these greater than or equal to sign and we have three different equations. Now step number two is finding coordinates from all the equations to plot lines on the graph chart using assumptions. Now, since this is a graphical solution, what we are going to do is we're going to be taking these three different equations and using these equations, we are going to be finding two coordinates per equation. So two for this, two for this and two for this. And since you can see we have X and Y, which means that we have a 2D graph, which we can plot. So we will be plotting lines. So starting off with the first equation, we have to make certain assumptions in every case. So first equation is three X plus one Y equals to 24. So in this case, what we're saying is let X equals to zero. Okay. So we are assuming this part as zero. So three into zero is going to be zero, which means one Y is equal to 24. That is Y equals to 24, right? So it will be directly 24 over here. So now the value is going to be zero comma 24. Zero is something that we assumed and we got Y. So for the second time we are assuming let Y equals to zero. So we are assuming this part as zero. So three X is equal to 24. That's why X is equal to 24 by three, right? So X is going to be eight. So this is going to be eight comma zero. So the first one is the X coordinate. Second one is the Y coordinate. So we assumed Y as zero. So that's why zero and X we got eight. Now, similarly, we're going to be doing this for the second equation and for the third equation. So I'm just going to fill in the values and we're going to be using the same thing. So I don't want to waste time. Okay. So we've got two coordinates per line and now we can go ahead and plot the chart and plot the lines. Okay. So as you can see, I have made X axis and Y axis. So I've made a basic graph chart. Now let's plot line number one. That is three X plus one Y equals to 24. So to plot it, we just have to find out the coordinates. So the first coordinate is this that is zero comma 24. So zero on the X axis. So I'm on the base and 24 on the Y axis. So I'm going to go all the way up. So this is that point. I'm going to mark it with yellow. The next point is over here. That is eight comma zero. So for the same line, we need one more coordinate to plot the line, right? We need two points to make a line. So this is eight comma zero. So eight is on the X axis and zero is on the Y axis. So this is that point. So this is our very first line. I'm just going to plot it and I'm just going to name it. The equation is three X plus one Y equals to 24. 
So 3x plus 1y equals to 24. Let's see the second line. I'm going to use some other color. So the second line is 0, 16. So 0 and 16. 16 is over here. And 16, 0. So the next point is over here. So I'm going to make a line. The line is 1x plus 1y equals to 16. And let's plot the last line. So the last line is 0, 8. So 0, 8 is over here. And 24, 0. So 24 is somewhere over here. So plotting this line. So I'm just going to name the line over here. 2x plus 6y is equal to 48. Okay. Okay. So these are the three different equations for which correspond to the three different lines. And now the next step is to find out the feasible region. So now when we are talking about minimization problems, the feasible region is not bounded. You know, in maximization, we were always marking some bounded region by the lines, right? So it was somewhere over here inside. But in minimization problem, it is always unbounded. So let me just mark the entire region and then tell you. So this is what I mean by unbounded feasible region. So everything beyond this till infinity is basically the feasible region, you know. However, since we have to minimize the loss or we have to minimize the cost, the minimum value will not be over here or will not be over here or will not be anywhere in this region, but it will be at the edges, you know, because over here only the X and Y values are going to be the least. And we know that X and Y values are the number of days, right? So X represents number of days line one is going to be operational and Y represents number of days line Y is going to be operational and we have to minimize that, right? So in minimum number of days, we want to reach the requirement of those number of TVs. So that's why X and Y values are going to be minimum at these extreme points and at these points where the lines meet. Okay. So these four points that I just marked in bold white circles are the coordinates where X and Y values are going to be minimum. And if you're wondering why this is not in the feasible region is because there is one line which is still above it, right? So it doesn't come in that area. So you have to consider all the three lines and only that area is feasible region, which does not come under that line that is over this side. So it has to be on the positive side. That's why it is supposed to be unbounded. Okay. So now we have these four points for which we have to find out the value of Z that is minimization equation. So let me just first name all these coordinates. So I'm going to name this one as A, this point as B, this point as C, and this last point as D. Now based on these four coordinates, let me show you a table. Okay, so these are the extreme points which we are interested in A, B, C and D, which I just named over here. The coordinates of A and D is already known. We know that A is 0, 0,24 because this is that point, right? And we also know this point that is 24, 0,0 because this point is exactly that. So we already know the coordinates of this point. Now we don't know the points B and C. That is, we don't know their coordinates, but we know that two lines meet at these points. So now we can use the two equations for which the two lines are crossing and solve them simultaneously to find the coordinates. So this is an algebraic process wherein we can use two equations and solve them simultaneously to find coordinates. So let's do that first. So for coordinate B, which is this coordinate, you can see that 3x plus 1y, that is this yellow line and 1x plus 1y equals to 16, that is this blue line are intersecting at this B coordinate. So we're going to be using these two equations and we're going to be solving it simultaneously. So to solve them simultaneously, what we're going to do is we are subtracting this equation that is second equation from equation number one. Okay. So this is a minus operation. So what are we going to be left out with? So this is minus, this is minus and this is minus, right? So this entire Y gets cancelled and this Y gets cancelled. So 3X minus 1X is 2X, which is equal to 24 minus 16. We're going to left out with 8. So X is going to be 4. So we got X equals to 4. Now we can substitute X equals to 4 in any of these equations and get the other value. So I'm going to substitute X equals to 4 over here in this equation number 2. So I'm going to say 4 plus 1Y is equal to 16. So Y is going to be 16 minus 4, which is going to be 12. Right. So we got y equals to 12. So now we have coordinate B whose value is 4 comma 12. So I'm just going to write it in the table 4 comma 12. Similarly for C also we'll do the same thing. So here what we're going to do is we're going to be multiplying this entire equation by 2. So doing that we get a third equation that is 2x plus 2y is equal to 32. So this is equation 3 let's assume. Now we're going to say subtracting equation 3 from 1. So we are subtracting this. So this becomes minus and minus from this equation. So 2x, 2x gets cancelled. 6y minus 2y is going to give you 4y is equal to 
फोर्टी एट माइनस थर्टी टू इज गन गिव यू सिक्सटीन सो वाई इज गन बी फोर सो नाउ वी गॉट वाई इन ऑर्डर टू गेट एक्स वी कैन जस्ट सब्सिट्यूट वाई इन एनी ऑफ द इक्वेशन सो एम गोना सब्सिट्यूट वाई इक्वल्स टू फोर इन इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो आई गेट एक्स प्लस फोर इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन सो एक्स इज गन बी सिक्सटीन माइनस फोर सो एक्स इज गन बी ट्वेल्व सो वी गॉट एक्स एंड वाई कॉर्डिनेट फॉर सी ऑल्सो दैट इज ट्वेल्व कॉम ऑफ फोर सो एम गोना राइट ट्वेल्व कॉम ऑफ फोर ओवर यर ओके सो नाउ वी हैव गॉट ऑल द वैल्यूज ऑफ ए बी सी एंड डी एंड नाउ द ओनली थिंग लेफ्ट आउट इज टू सब्सिट्यूट दीज वैल्यूज दैट इज एक्स एस जीरो एंड वाई एस ट्वेंटी फोर इन दिस मिनिमाइजेशन इक्वेशन सो फॉर ए एंड बी आई हैव ऑलरेडी डन इट एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी गॉट द वैल्यूज ऑफ नाइन्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड एंड वन लैख फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड सो दिस इज इन एक्चुअल रुपीज ओके सो सो दैट इज वॉट आर मिनिमाइजेशन इक्वेशन वॉज अबाउट राइट सो दिस इज द कॉस्ट इक्वेशन सो वील सब्सिट्यूट एक्स एज फोर in this equation and y as 12 in this equation and we'll see what we get the value so you can use your calc and quickly get these values i'm just going to fill in all the values okay so as you can see i have substituted x and y in this minimization equation and what i've got is 96000 72000 88000 and 144000 now don't forget that this is a minimization equation which means we are not interested in the highest value because we don't want the highest cost we want the lowest cost so observing this table we can see that This seventy-two thousand is the lowest, right? So this is our actual answer. And what is this seventy-two thousand? This seventy-two thousand rupees is the cost that the TV manufacturer is gonna face to meet the requirements of twenty-four color TVs, sixteen standard TVs, and forty-eight economy TVs. And this will only happen if he runs the line one for four days, which is the x coordinate, and if he runs the line two for twelve days. Okay. So this is how you finalize the last answer. So you will say the optimum solution is at point B, that is x equals to four and y equals to twelve, and z minimum is equal to seventy-two thousand rupees. That is, so this means the TV manufacturer should run the line one for four days and line two for twelve days, which will cost him rupees seventy-two thousand. So this is going to be your final answer, which you have to write, and this is very important that you. Frame it as it is, or in a way that it is complete. So you need to tell them that x is the number of days line one is going to be operational, y is the number of days that is line two is going to be operational, and that would cost him seventy two thousand, which is the minimum cost. Okay, so this was the entire minimization problem using graphical solution for LPP problem, and that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood the entire problem. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified. whenever i upload a new educational video and content thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace